Hi and welcome to part four of the Honda gearbox change. In this video we'll be removing, swapping all the gearbox bits over and fitting the gearbox back into the car. So the first thing we need to do is to remove the wheel arch liner. There's some pop rivets that allow you to pull that out. We also need to disconnect any connectors on the gearbox. So there's a connector here and there's another one behind and there's some zip ties that hold some bits and pieces in place. So we'll have to get them undone. So I'm gonna undo this connector here. So to take the gearbox off itself, we have six bolts we need to undo. Now we're coming down from underneath, we can see just behind the drive shaft shield, there's a bolt there in the middle. There's one lower down and there's one further up that we're looking at right now. So the drive shaft shield does need to come off. Uh, unfortunately, when I was undoing this, the bolt snapped, so I wasn't gonna focus on that. Now I'm undoing the first one, so I'm using the wobble joint, which allows me to come back and film more than anything. And I'm using some extensions. So these will just come out nice and easily. They do take a little bit at first just to get them undone. So I'm using a breaker bar, but once the breaker bar is taken enough out, I can then just use the ratchet and socket on there and we can get those undone. So that's the first two done. Now I think there's four on the back side and there's two on the front. And then we're gonna get that higher one again. Now again, this is one where wobble sockets actually did help me with access. Um, I undid it off camera uh, to slacken it and then just did the rest quickly there. Right, so we're gonna undo this lower bolt here. I believe it's the last one on this side. And the engine's flexing. Uh, I've got the engine supported at the moment and the gearbox in case anything wants to drop. In one of those earlier videos, we have disconnected some of the mounts. Now next to this, there's the plate as well you can see there. That's just a flywheel cover, but we need to get that undone as well. So just a couple quick uh, bolts to undo there. I think a couple of 10 mils. Now this one was nasty to come off, it's actually been mauled up with some aluminium because we're replacing the gearbox not too fast and luckily the new gearbox came with some spare bolts so there's no need to have to clean that up. So this is one of the other bolts on the opposite side of the gearbox, so undoing that with the breaker bar and then going to get the ratchet on there and undo that sort of nice and quickly. So we're just going to back that out and of course it was only five because the sixth one would have been for the starter motor not for the gearbox itself right so with the gearbox now unbolted from the engine we have one last body mount to undo and i'm just going to sort of show you the position i'm getting into to get to this it's under the wheel arch or it's next to the wheel arch and it's straight up and it's just a couple of bolts you need to undo here so it's just these two uh, they connect to the gearbox mount there and we're just going to undo those two nice and quickly and then we are actually ready to drop the gearbox. So I'm just going to come up here with a nice long socket and get that undone. Again, this is one of the reasons you need to take the wheel arch off, just because it gives you better access. And then there's that cover plate for the flywheel. So with that out of the way and precarious pieces of wood on the jack, let's get the gearbox out. So this might need quite a bit of shaking to free the bonds and everything. And one thing I just wanted to do, I just wanted to make sure that the engine itself was supported and we put support under the gearbox so it doesn't drop straight down. And when it comes to reinstalling it, I ended up deciding this wasn't too great and I sort of came up with something a little bit different. And remember the drive shaft, we'll do all that when it comes out. I mentioned that in one of the earlier parts. Okay, so the gearbox has been separated. We're just going to pull it back a little bit more. We need to free it and get it over the flywheel and the clutch. And then once it's out enough, we can lower it. So that's now sitting on the jack. So we can actually sort of drop that out of the way. And then what we'll actually do just to show you everything is we'll get that drop down. So it might take quite a bit of pulling back and forth and shaking it just to get it over everything and get it so it is finally ready to drop. So we're getting the jack out of the way. And then that's just been lowered by hand. Now, you may want a gearbox trolley or something, depending on your back, and if you want to drop the gearbox from there or not like this, um, it's your own personal sort of preference, but that's the old gearbox out, so what we then need to do is to get this drive shaft out. We had an absolute nightmare with this, and just sort of illustrating the fun and games we had with it, it didn't seem to want to pop out. Um, eventually, we rotated it into position, because uh, the absolute force wasn't working, and rotating it in the right way, I think it let it pop past the circlip. Uh, because of the fun games we had with this, we decided to replace the drive shaft. In fact, I need to do a different video on that uh, because of circlips, but it did eventually come out. Right, so here's the new gearbox. It's a £100 eBay reconditioned special. 
Uh, I think there's quite a big business in people reconditioning these Honda Jazz gearboxes and knowing to go. And this is just a notation I was making for the mounting holes for myself. So what I need to do now is get in my garage, get both gearboxes out. We're gonna have a look at them. Uh, just out of interest, I'm just gonna play with the spindles a bit, see what play there is in the old gearbox and how things feel in the new gearbox. So you can kind of hear a little bit more of what's going on with that old gearbox and the new one feels a lot more solid. So we need to take off this clutch fork, so that just pops out. We need to put that onto the new gearbox. I'm not sure I've filmed that part, but it's just a reversal. Now all these mountain brackets aren't on a new gearbox, so I need to remove them from the old one. We're gonna take that uh, piece of rubber mountain out so we can get to the bolts behind to undo the bracket. So we undo the bracket and pop that to one side. Now I'm gonna compare everything, but obviously if you're doing this yourself, you can take them from one, put them straight onto the other gearbox so you're good to go. We're then gonna do this other bracket here. So we're gonna undo the bolts off the back. I think it's three. And everything's sort of fairly well positioned. Uh, just note, don't do it on the kind of workbench like I have. The twisting forces I was using on it ended up sort of cracking my workbench. Uh, but however, I was just trying to do some camera to illustrate. And I'm just sort of showing you the bits I'm undoing. So I think there is three things that we need to undo. Uh, so there's a mount either side and then there's a little piece of bracketry as well that we need to take off That's the two mounts. And then lastly, there's a bracket up towards the top of the gearbox So you're just gonna get this undone and one of the interesting things is you can see that this gearbox has got uh, sort of junkyard or scrapyard Markings on it. So this is probably the third if not the fourth gearbox that, that Honda Jazz has had So these are the four parts you're gonna install on your other gearbox on your new working gearbox So just to reverse what we did before we're just going to put these mounts on. So we're just going in reverse order to start with. I just had to use a rattling spanner there because I couldn't get the socket in from every direction. We're going to put on that back bracket. So this is the one that fits sort of near the wheel arch. This is the one that's at the back of the engine. And we'll put the mount back in, or the bushing. In fact, it's probably a good point if it does look like it is a bit worse for wear to stick a new one in completely. Right, so I mentioned I wanted to whip something up for putting the gearbox back in, so I've got some old shelves. The first one I put a hole through, so that's mounted through the jack. And then the three underneath put a hole in initially and then hacked out a much bigger hole. This is so we literally can just jack the gearbox up to meet the car itself and there's no bending over and hyper extending your back. So with our super budget jack for the gearbox, we're going to put the gearbox into place. So it's actually quite handy to line everything up and just have to lift it sort of a little bit. We could just sort of see where everything fits. Now I'm not going to show this being lifted back over because we had to get in there and it wasn't really appropriate to get the camera at the same time. But basically, roughly get the gearbox in place, line it up, pull it over, and then put the bolts back in. So this is roughly where we were before. And there's also a decision made that the clutch had enough life in it that it didn't need replacing. So the gearbox is actually now back on and we're going to get the first of these bolts back in. And unfortunately the sun made this very difficult to film but I'm just gonna do them hand tight and then I'm gonna do them off the breaker bar. So we've got the four on the back and the one at the front and then the final one, if you count it, would be with the starter motor. Now, I'm not gonna go over these too much because you've already seen these coming off, but what I just wanted to do quickly is to very quickly get most of the bolts in, just to confirm that the gearbox was in the right position and then I'm gonna go around and do the final tightening. And then I've done the plate cover as well for the flywheel. So everything's been tightened off camera. So there's our last bolt going in for the gearbox. So we're just gonna do that nice and snugged up. And then after that, so you see that just pull in. And then we're gonna put this mount back on. So obviously we also have to do that mount from the underside um, that's just coming up there. So I just wanted to make sure we get the position of all this okay. So make sure that that long threaded bolt can go back in. We'll get these four nuts and bolts back into place. And don't forget about the earth strap, but you can come back to that later, because when I do, I end up cleaning things up a little bit. And those last two bolts underneath. Okay, that's it for part number four. Join us in part five where we'll start putting everything else back in place like the subframe and the suspension. If you've got any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please remember to hit subscribe and more than anything, thank you for watching.